Hello learners, I am Mohini Arora, HOD Computer Science and I am here to present before you a session on data communication and networking for the students of computer science. Today in this session we will be covering the following objectives. We will be learning about the basic elements of data communication system. We will be describing protocols and transmission modes. We will be learning about networks, how to use networks, different types of networks and various network components and terminologies. We will also on the final end understand various types of network topologies and architectures. We will also be covering various transmission media that are used in forming the network. So first and foremost, we begin with data communication. What is communication of data? Data communication is transmission of data from one computer system to another. We all know that in today's world, we require to share data, to transfer data from one machine to another, from one user to another. So today in this session, we will be covering data communication that is transmission of data from one computer system to another. To communicate data, to transfer data, we require a sender that is creating a message to be transmitted. We require a medium that carries the message, that medium can be a wire. We require a receiver that receives the message. So a sender, a medium and a receiver is required to communicate data between two or more computers. Now, when we are communicating between two computers, there has to be certain set of rules that have to be followed. Say for example, if we want to communicate between each other, if two people, two students want to communicate between each other, certain protocols, certain rules have to be followed that we should understand the language that we are speaking. When one person is speaking, another person is listening and so on. So when we are communicating on a network between two machines, between two computers, then also certain rules have to be followed over the network. Such rules are known as protocols. These are procedures of data transformation in the form of software that are installed in the machines that are on the network. Some common examples of protocols are TCP IP that is transmission control protocol and internet protocol and HTTP that is hypertext transfer protocol. You will be learning about more protocols in the coming sessions. Now before understanding different types of protocols, we should also know the main functions that a protocol does. A protocol is responsible for four basic functions. First one, data sequencing. This is breaking up of a long messages into smaller packets. When these packets are made, each packet is sequenced, numbered, and then sent across the transmission medium for the receiver to be received in proper manner. So this job of sequencing the data, of breaking the data into smaller packets is done by protocols. Second function that a protocol does is routing of data. Routing is finding the most efficient route to transmit data. A network may be having multiple paths. By applying various methods, a protocol finds the best possible path for efficient transmission of data and give the data as soon as possible. Next function is flow control. It is not necessary that a sender and a receiver may be on the same platform or may be working on same speeds. So this mismatch of speeds is again managed by protocols. It regulates the transmission process between a fast sender and a slow receiver or vice versa. And the last function that is performed by communication protocols is controlling the errors. While transmitting data, some packet might have been lost or the transmission might not have been proper, the medium would have been defective, any error might creep up while communicating the packets on the network. So a protocol ensures that data is transmitted without any error, 
there are various error detection methods, there are various recovery programs that a protocol follows while communicating data on the network. So, these are the four major functions. Now, we move on to data transmission modes. There are various modes, we will be covering three basic transmission modes, simplex transmission mode, half duplex transmission mode and full duplex transmission mode. Let us cover them one by one. First, we move on to simplex transmission mode. As the name says, this is the simplest mode of transmission. There are two uh, devices, two computers connected by one single transmission medium and the communication takes place only in one direction. That is why we say that it is a unidirectional flow of information. That means two computers connected by a wire, that particular wire can transmit data either from A to B or B to A as shown in the figure. You can see that A and B are two computers and the, the transmission is going only from A to B. It cannot go from B to A. Since this causes a lot of uh, time wastage, that is why this particular method is rarely used. We move on to next transmission mode, that is the half duplex transmission mode. It covers up the drawback of the simplex mode as the communication channel is used in both directions, but in only one direction at a time. That means if the transmission is happening from A to B, then it will not happen from B to A during that time. So, the transmission channel can be used in both directions as shown in the figure that will be coming up. But this uh, sending and receiving of data is done alternatively in the two directions. That means when the data is being transmitted from A to B, it will not be transmitted from B to A. This is the half duplex transmission mode. We move on to the next transmission mode that is the full duplex transmission mode. It is the best transmission mode being used these days as the communication channel is used in both directions at the same time and it is very obvious that it saves lot of time. This improves the efficiency of the networks. Our telephone lines are majorly using the full duplex transmission mode as you must have experienced that one single telephone line is used to communicate between two computers for sending and receiving the data at the same time. So, full duplex transmission mode is the most efficient transmission mode that is used for communicating data over the network. Next, we move on to very broadly classified transmission types. This is the digital and analog transmission types. A digital signal can have only discrete values 0 and 1. There is nothing in between these two discrete values. On the other hand, an analog signal varies over a continuous range with respect to sound, light, radio waves or time. So, today in our computer networks, we are basically following the digital transmission mode that is the discrete transmission mode. The screen here shows both the waves, the digital signal and the analog signal. You can see the difference between the waves. A digital signal is either having a high or a low, a 1 or a 0. There is nothing in between them. On the other hand, an analog signal slowly moves from 0 to 1 and vice versa. Next, we have uh, transmission uh, types that is the asynchronous transmission and synchronous transmission. Asynchronous transmission, the data transmission is done character by character. As you are typing on the keyboard, the data is being transmitted. There is no grouping of data. On the other hand, in synchronous transmission, first a small block or a small packet of data is made means instant transmission of data is not there. Each block contains multiple characters, there is a fixed size block that is set in when that block is filled, then it is sent for the transmission. So, in case of asynchronous transmission, there may be irregular gaps between characters because there is a difference between typing speed and the transmission speed. So, there can be irregular gaps between characters, but in case of synchronous transmission, there are no such gaps. 
But yes, asynchronous transmissions are cheaper to implement as there is no need of saving data before sending them. But in case of synchronous transmission, the data has to be saved into a block. Then only it can be sent forward. So it is an expensive implementation as compared to asynchronous transmission. But synchronous transmission is very well suited for remote communication system between two computers or a computer and other peripheral devices like printers, scanners, etc. So these are two basic classification of transmission based on the mode of transmission, how data is transmitted, uh, whether it is character by character or whether it is block by block. Next, we move on to a very important topic of transmission media. A medium of transmission is very important between two computers or a computer and a peripheral. A medium of transmission is the basic tool that is deciding the speed of network, the efficiency of network. The communication media that we will be covering in this session is twisted pair, coaxial cables, microwaves and communication satellites. But actually speaking, there are various other communication media also that you must be seeing around you. So let's start with the first one that is the twisted pair or a wired pair, a very commonly used, cheap, low expensive but less efficient uh, transmission media or communication media is a twisted pair. It is generally used in local telephone communication. There are two or more copper wires twisted together. The data transmission speed is quite less and there is also a problem of noise in such type of communication media. So they cannot be used for very large distances or very complex networks. Simple networks, two computers placed together not at a very far distance, you do not want to communicate much larger files than twisted pairs or wired pairs are used. Next we move on to coaxial cables. A better transmission medium, obviously as you see in the picture, it has got a specially wrapped insulated wire that are able to transfer data at high rate. Since the wires are insulated, so the problem of noise and interference is not there. The central copper wire as you see, it is in the center in the picture. It is surrounded by an insulation wire above which again a copper mesh is there. So the noise immunity is very good in this and it has a faster data transfer rate as compared to the twisted pair. Because of these features, it can be used in long distance communication for telephone lines and for LANs. Very, very commonly used transmission medium is the coaxial cable. Next, we move to microwaves. Twisted pair and coaxial cables were wired transmission mediums. There were physical wires connecting two or more computers. But microwaves are unwired or unguided transmission mediums. Here very high frequency radio signals are used to transmit data through space. This type of transmission as you can see in the picture also, this type of transmission is a line of sight communication. That means the transmitter and repeater should be in line of sight. There should be no hindrance between those two. If that is the case, then transmission will not be able to possible. And this is the reason because of the curvature of the earth, very long distance transmission is not possible in case of microwaves. The repeaters have to be used after every 25 to 30 kilometers to amplify the weak signal. But yes, for short distances, it is a very, very useful and economical communication medium. Next, we move on to satellites, most widely used, covers the entire globe and overcomes the drawbacks of the line of sight communication. This is because a communication satellite is placed in the outer space. And since it is placed in the outer space, so it can be accessed from anywhere on the earth. So the scope of this particular transmission is the entire globe. A microwave signal is transmitted from the transmitter on the earth and the satellite amplifies it and broadcasts it back on the earth. 
So, any receiver that tunes to the frequency can receive that signal. Data transmission rate is very high 16 gigabits per second. How the transmission takes place in case of communication satellites? generally use them in big metropolitan cities as I told you that these are used to connect the entire globe and uh, see in this particular picture you will see that there is a, a satellite in the outer space and from the earth you have a transmitter that is uplinking or that is transmitting the data to the satellite. The satellite amplifies it and sends down the broadcasts it down to the earth from where the receivers which are tuned to the frequency they receive the signals. So, this is a very very widely used communication medium that we have for transmitting data throughout the globe. Next we move on to computer networks. We have been talking about networks. We have been thinking about connecting the globe each and every part of the globe, a network is an interconnection of various computers and peripherals. And broadly speaking, networks can be of two types, local area network or LAN and wide area network or WAN. Let us do these one by one. LAN is as the name says local. A LAN is a network that is spanning a smaller area. The computers or the peripherals that are connected to each other are geographically close together. They are confined to a building or a group of buildings. So, the scope is quite less in case of LAN. When I come to WAN, wide area networks, the scope is huge. I am able to connect large geographical area. Various small, small networks are connected together and they form a WAN. These connections can be through public networks such as telephone systems, such as leased lines or satellites. Today, the largest WAN that we have is the internet. You must have heard about internet, we all are using internet these days. So, that is the largest WAN that is available today. We move on to network topologies. When we form a network, a network can be formed in various ways, in various methods. We can arrange two computers, two or more computers in various types. So, a topology is geometric arrangement of computers in a network. I can arrange the network in star topology, a ring topology or a bus topology. When I talk about star topology, as you can see on the screen also, there is a central computer, we generally call it a server. And all other computers that we call node or workstations, these computers are connected to the central unit. So, entire network is dependent on the central unit. There are various positives and negatives of star topology. The central unit has the entire node of the network that is the disadvantage, but it is very easy to add or delete a node without affecting the entire network in star topology. It is a big advantage of star topology. I want to delete a particular node, I need not stop the entire network. Next we have ring topology. Just like the shape of a ring, the shape of a circle, the computers are connected end to end in a closed loop. There are no central host, there are no central control units, there is no computer on which entire network is dependent. So, the messages travel in the form of a ring means if A wants to send a message to B, it will travel across the ring and when B receives the signal, it takes it, rest all ignore it. So, this particular network can span over larger distances because they are being connected end to end. So, they can be spanned over larger distances that is the advantage of a ring topology. Moving on to bus topology. Bus topology is similar to ring network. The only difference is that in case of ring network, the first and the last computers are also connected to each other. While in case of bus topology, the ends are not connected. There is a central bus. There is a central channel through which all the computers are connected, but there is no connection between the first computer and the last computer. 
So, this is what is a bus topology. Again, a very simple topology, easy to implement, easy to manage. We move on to next topic that is the network architecture. This refers to the software, hardware or combination of hardware and software that forms a network. We have two basic types of network architecture, one is peer to peer architecture and we have the client server architecture. In case of peer to peer architecture, all computers in a network that we call generally the computers in a network are called nodes or workstations. So, all nodes or all workstations are equal. They have equal capabilities, they are of equal composition and they share equal responsibilities. These are simpler networks, very less expensive and easy to implement. But when the network load is heavy, means there are too much communication taking place on the network, then they do not perform very well. That is the drawback of a peer to peer architecture. We move on to client server architecture. In this particular architecture, each computer that is there on the network is either a client or a server. Now, a client is a regular computer performing a regular job. On the other hand, servers are powerful computers dedicated to a particular job. For example, a, a server that is managing disk drives is a file server. A server that is managing printers is a printer server. A server which is managing network traffic, user authentication, giving rights to the users is a network server. So, a server is having a particular task to perform to which it is dedicated. On the other hand, client is dependent on the server to do its job. So, clients are less powerful computers on a network as compared to servers and they can run an application, they can use a particular uh, device only if the server gives them authentication to do so. So, this is what is a client server architecture. It performs very well, it is a very efficient architecture. As I told before, clients can rely only on servers for resources. So, it is more secure as compared to peer to peer architecture. When we talk about networks, there are certain terms that we are using quite commonly on a network. And as we discussed before, internet is one such term. We studied before that internet, the largest WAN is internet. And WAN is connection of small, small LANs. So that is why internet is a network of networks that connects all computers across the globe. Today, I can communicate with any machine anywhere around the world through internet. Next term that we are very commonly using these days is email, which stands for electronic mail, which has replaced all other modes of sending messages. Very widely used feature, instant messages can be sent. Immediately, they can be saved, they can be received on the inbox. We can read them any of the time. So, this is what is email. Then we have voice messaging. Voice messaging is audio messages sent via internet. When you are sending not text, when we talk about email, these are the text messages. When I talk about voice messaging, these are the audio messages. So, when you send audio messages that are being recorded through the microphone on the internet, then this uh, corresponds to voice messaging. Next term that we have is e-commerce, electronic commerce, business through the internet. So, e-commerce is paperless exchange of business information using electronic means. When I am buying and selling products or services using the internet, I am using the e-commerce feature of the internet. Next commonly used term is the electronic data interest change or EDI as we say in short form. This is the computer to computer exchange of business documents in standard format which are very very highly structured. You must have seen that these days government is using uh, all electronic means to fill up your Aadhaar card, to fill up your um, passport forms 
to apply for PAN cards, these are all being done through this very feature that is electronic data interchange, where this, the documents are available in standard format. In fact, if you are trading on the net, this you are buying and selling shares on the net, then also all those documents are available, all receipts, e-receipts that you are paying through the net, your premiums for your policies, all these receipts are available in standard format, structured format, which are not like able to be tempered. So, we are doing electronic data interchange and we also are hearing quite a lot about teleconferencing. That means, the electronic meetings where multiple people are involved, those people are not physically present together, but they are able to communicate with each other, they are able to hold discussions on each with each other on a particular topic sitting at their own places. This is what is teleconferencing. You must have uh, seen on news the debates going on, where people at different cities are sitting and debating on a particular topic. You can see the picture, you can hear the voice of all these people. This is what is teleconferencing. So, this brings us to the end of this session. In this session, let us have a small recap. We have learnt about the basic elements of data communication system. We have learnt about protocols that means the set of rules that should be followed while communication. We learnt about transmission modes, simplex, half duplex, full duplex. We have also learnt about users, types and components of networks. Network topologies means the manner in which a network can be formed and network architectures peer-to-peer -peer and client-server architecture. We learnt about various transmission media, we learnt about a twisted pair, the coaxial cable, microwave transmission and satellite transmission. And finally, we also discussed network terminologies like internet, email, voice messaging, e-commerce, EDI and teleconferencing. I hope that you have learnt from this session and you enjoyed it. Thank you.